Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the specific features in Jamf Teacher, in particular, creating lessons. So I'm going to jump into the Jamf Teacher app on the device here. And on my other device, you'll see that I've got a student device set up and you'll be able to see how this impacts on the second screen. Now, we've looked at this before in another video where we've checked out kind of the whole setup of Jamf Teacher, the, the general things that you can do. And we've looked at how to create classes, etc. In this session, we're just going to look really at lessons, what lessons means and how you can use this to organize and maintain uh, just structure within your classroom, both remote and face to face. So I'm going to just tap within the box here, take me into my lessons section and I have the option here to create a lesson. Plus, useful to know that any created lessons you have, you can equally um, edit these and also share these with colleagues as well. So again, quite a useful tool here, where it means that not, not everything has to be done by the individual, because actually one individual could create this and then share it to colleagues, etc. depending obviously on your setup in school. So let's take a look at what we do to create a lesson. I'm just gonna tap in here, First of all, obviously, we give our lesson a name. Let's say that this is going to be a geography lesson. For argument's sake, could be anything. Uh, and I'll just say that that's a year seven session. Um, and then obviously you can give this a full description. You know, what's the lesson about? It could be about volcanoes or earthquakes or sedimentary rock or whatever else it might be. Then we start to get into the really kind of useful parts where you can plan your lesson in advance where technology may be used to support the learning. One thing that we can add in is the ability to allow specific apps. Now, talking to lots of schools, talking to lots of teachers that are integrating technology and specifically iPad into learning, one of the questions that comes up all the time is, how can I just make sure that students aren't you know, being distracted by those other apps on their devices? There are a way to do it. And you can do it within Apple Classroom to a certain extent because you can you know, lock them into certain apps. But maybe you don't want to lock them into a specific app. Maybe you want to give them choice still, but you just want to take away some of those distractions. So what's great here, if I go into allowed apps, is I can choose the apps that I want the students to be able to go into. Very similar to the parent control app that we looked at in another video. So let's say I want them to, to do some stuff around AR Maker. I think that would be useful. Definitely want them to have access to clips and classroom. Camera is always going to be very useful, etc. Um, but that's all I want them to work within. When that's created, these are the apps that will be on the screen. Now, there may also be some lesson links that you want to add in there. So there might be some specific content you think is going to be really, really useful for those students. So let's just think about what this might be. Um, let's just say it's going to be some research and we're going to find a URL. So let's just quickly jump into Safari and see what we can find as a URL, maybe not daffodils. Let's have a look at volcanoes. Here's some volcanoes facts. National Geographic website should hopefully be very useful for the students. So I'm just going to copy this link, jump back into Teacher, add the link in here, and then just tap Add Link. And now that's become a page um, just th that's going to have access for my students. And again, I have apps access to be able to lock them into specific websites or lock them into Safari. I'm not going to lock them in, but again, just highlighting you can. Now, there's other things that you can allow in terms of just generalized content or general functionality of the device. So again, here, I don't need them to be going off the App Store or iTunes or Game Center. I might leave message open. Definitely going to want them to to make screenshots and recordings if that's what they want to do. Spell checking and autocorrect is obviously really useful, as is dropping uh, airdropping files to each other. Music, get yeah, happy for them to do that. But in general, I'm going to turn off entertainment, games, um, and shopping, probably not the most essential things for them to use. And that's it. There's my kind of lesson structure from a tech point of view sorted out. Obviously, you're potentially going to add in more content than that, um, specifically maybe around those lesson links. But just as an example, that's what we can create. And then I tap save, and that is now a created lesson. Now, when it comes to the starter lesson, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. I can either tap on those three dots, choose to start that lesson. Oops, apologies. Tap on the lesson. Choose to start that lesson for any of these groups. So let's just say that it's going to be in my demo class. 
I can automatically clear these restrictions after, let's say, 50 minutes for this, which means at that point they'll have open access to the device again. Choose that class and tap Start. Now what you'll notice then on the student device is that has now restricted that content instantly to those things that I want the students to be able to look at. So they only have the camera um, and clips and classroom and AR maker and those other things that I've said that they can have access to on the device. I can end this at any point as well. So once I've started that session, I can end that session at any point as well and just clear it so that students just can you know, go back to using their device as they need to. So if I go into that demo class, open that class, we've already got this started. I could turn off those restrictions here just by clearing them on the device, which again is going to open up that student's device back to normal again, just instantly on my device. So again, it's an IT skill tool that can be used to manage devices, but we're showing you how teachers can use this really, really effectively in their classrooms to just help organize, manage, and limit those distractions that students might have at any point on their device. Now, equally, we said there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, if I'm now in my class, so let's go back to having a look at starting this a second way. Here's my classes. I could be in my class here. I can go to start a lesson, and you'll see that those lessons that we've created are automatically in here. So it could be, you know, if you're teaching younger years and it's one teacher, lots of subjects, you could have kind of your setup here, creative learning, uh, research-based learning, problem-based learning, and you can kind of have your settings all in advance for you, ready to just kind of distribute to the students' devices, um, making it really, really simple and easy to do. And all of this nicely managed on your iPads. So again, if I just jump into that demo lesson now and start it, you'll see that that instantly has put those settings onto that student's device, and those students are just limited to those apps that correspond to that lesson that I've started for them. Again, clearing restrictions, as easy as just tapping clear restrictions, allowing that full content back for those students. So there we go. That's how you can utilize the Apple uh, Classroom, how you can utilize the Jamf Teacher app, how you can utilize those lessons within Jamf Teacher to really help organize you in your classroom. Making sure that those IT things that are put in the backbone become something that teachers utilize to make sure that their lessons go according to plan.